Just this week, Visual Studio released a massive update for Unreal Engine developers, and it just so happens that I need to set up a new machine. Figured I'd go ahead and record a video, show y'all how I like to get my machine configured, and also just provide myself a reference so uh, if some doofus two years from now forgets where a setting is, he can uh, look back and find it. It's me, I'm the doofus. Um, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna go to visualstudio.com to download the latest version. If you just click free Visual Studio, that will take you over to the community page. We will download that and we will get the installer running. So the installer is going to set up the Visual Studio installer. This takes just a minute and then we'll be able to pick what options we want for our Visual Studio installation. Um, I am going to do .NET desktop development, desktop development with C++, and game development with C++. And under game development, we wanna make sure that we have IDE support for Unreal Engine. If you're gonna be doing anything with shaders, you'll want the HLSL tools. And we will also want the Unreal Engine test adapter so that we can run Unreal tests from within the Visual Studio interface. This might not get absolutely everything we need, but once we create a C++ project, Visual Studio will prompt us to install any packages that are missing. And that's totally okay because the packages that you need might vary based on the latest version of Unreal and the latest version of Visual Studio. This is gonna take a little bit to run, but through the power of editing, it will be done almost instantaneously in the video. Huge success, Visual Studio is installed and it is doing its first launch. If you've never run Visual Studio before, it's gonna prompt you to sign in. Signing in is totally optional, but it does have the advantage that if you have an account on another computer, it will sync some of your settings. I'm gonna go ahead and do continue without code. So my Visual Studio instance is already running the dark theme, which is what I prefer. Um, another thing that is worth looking at is if you come to scroll bar in options, and if you go to all languages scroll bars, I like to use the map mode narrow for my scroll bars, and that will give you a layout of the file you're looking at in the scroll bar over on the right. And I'll show you what that looks like once we actually get a file open. Um, in addition to getting Visual Studio set up, I also need to go ahead and get Unreal Engine 5.3 installed in this machine. So I'm going to come over to the Epic Game Store. I am gonna to go to the Unreal Engine tab. I'm gonna add the new engine version, which is the latest version in this case. I'm gonna click install. And under options, I like to include editor symbols for debugging so that if I have a problem, I can debug right into what the editor is doing. Um, I'm generally not gonna build from source on a hobby project, on a professional project, I'd build from source and the symbols aren't necessary. The big caveat is this is gonna take an extra 80 gigs. Um, once again, this is gonna take a while to run, but through the power of editing, y'all won't see that. Um, while this is getting configured, let's also look at plugins. Um, this is totally optional, but I really like a plugin called Output Enhancer. And what Output Enhancer does is it will add some basic coloring to some of the output windows. So if you have a build error, it will highlight in red, hey, I had a build error. Um, once I do that, that will schedule the update. I will close Visual Studio. It will run the installer. And when it comes back up, Output Enhancer will be installed. I'm gonna go ahead and let the engine get installed here. Let this plugin get installed and then we will continue to the next step. All right, with Unreal installed, we now need to install the Visual Studio integration tool which is a free plugin and is gonna connect our Unreal project up to Visual Studio. So this is how Visual Studio is gonna get information on things like what blueprints are in the project. Um, you can find the integration tool for free on the Unreal Marketplace. You just install it to your engine version, which in our case is 5.3. I'm gonna let that run. And while that installs, I'm also gonna go ahead and create a Lyra project which is a free starter project for Unreal Engine 5. Uh, apparently I need to update it, but once that is updated, I am going to create a brand new instance of Lyra. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and create a Lyra project, which we will use to demo the rest of the integrations. And I'm gonna select 5.3. I'm gonna create that under my documents. And we will go ahead and let that run. While that runs, I want to install the Unreal VS Visual Studio plugin, which is gonna be located under your install directory in the Engine Extras Unreal VS VS 2022 project. So come to the VSIX file, run that. It's gonna prompt us to install. And we now have Unreal VS installed. Lyra is still getting set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and close out some of these windows. All right, we now have Lyra up and running. I'm gonna go ahead and run it one time just to get shaders built. Okay, I have Lyra running. Now what I need to do is I need to turn on that Visual Studio plugin. And you can get here by going to Edit, Plugins, and I'm gonna search Visual Studio again. And it is not showing up. So let's figure out why. I don't know why. I might've just spelled wrong or it might've been populating, but I wanna turn on Visual Studio integration tools. I'm gonna punch Restart now. That's gonna reload the project for me. And we now have the necessary hooks for Visual Studio to start to our project. So for every C++ project where we want to use the Visual Studio integration, we need to do the one-time step of turning on the Visual Studio integration tools. Great, now that that's done, I am gonna go ahead and generate my project files. So I am gonna to come to the location that I provisioned Lyra. In Explorer, I'm going to right click on Lyra Starter Game. I'm going to say General, Generate Visual Studio Project Files. That's going to run. And out the other side of this, I'm going to have a solution file that I can use. And we're going to open. First time might take a minute, a little bit slow here. All right, so Visual Studio is up. I'm gonna come over to the games folder. I'm gonna make sure that Lyra starter game is set as my startup project, and it is. And we'll also see that Visual Studio helpfully brought up some Unreal integration configuration checks. We're gonna do that in just a minute. But first what we're gonna go do is we are going to turn on the Unreal VS toolbar, um, which is gonna give us compile or uh, command line arguments for our project. I'm also going to go ahead and make these dropdowns a little bit wider so I can read that. I do that by right clicking, going to customize, commands, toolbar, and I'm gonna do standard first. For solution configuration, I'm gonna have that be 200 wide. For solution platforms, that's actually, the default is probably okay at 110. I'm gonna to come to Unreal VS and I am going to make the startup project selector be 200 wide, and the command line editor I like to be 400 wide. It's gonna give me lots of room for all my command line arguments. You'll also note that Visual Studio is now prompting us to install a few more components. We can go ahead and do that. And the reason I like to do this at this stage is because the components are gonna vary based on the current version of Visual Studio and the current version of Unreal Engine. So I don't try and get that right up front. If the defaults miss, this will get us all fixed up and the Visual, In Studio, the Visual Studio installer will run, make those changes and reopen. And this is a much, much, much quicker operation than that initial install. So that's done. Our installation is now complete. We're gonna reopen here and it does look like our command line argument did now correctly resize the way we expected. Again, I'm gonna make sure Lyra game is my startup project. And before we go and run our Unreal Engine integration configuration checks, let's first just do an F5 run and make sure that the editor boots properly. Okay, we're done with our initial compile and it booted up successfully, which is exactly what we expect. So one cool thing I'll show you right off the bat is when you're in a debugging session, there's an Unreal Engine log pane, which you can get to from View, Other Windows, Unreal Engine Log. And this will let you filter by category and by verbosity. So if I wanna just look at, say, display level log messages, I can filter right here in Visual Studio. I can also filter by category. 
Um, this is all of the usual Unreal logging that you expect, but it's right here within Visual Studio. So now that I've got this all up and running, I've confirmed that my build works. We're gonna close that out and we'll see Unreal shut down here. I will go ahead and run the Unreal Engine configuration checks. And this is gonna take a minute, but it's gonna run a bunch of checks and make sure we've got everything set up properly. Also, it's gonna introduce a brief rendering bug where the pane squishes. I don't know why it does that. Might just be my computer. Okay. So the Visual Studio integration tool is up and running. It detected that correctly. The test adapter is set up, which we installed. So that's correct. We have not yet set up the HLSL support or the naming convention checker. Um, thankfully, this is fairly straightforward. If we click this link, it will take us to the documentation for how this works and it will show us what we need in our default editor config file. So I'm just gonna copy all of this. I'm gonna come back to Visual Studio. I'm gonna press add. I'm gonna create it at the root of my project. And then I am going to paste this all in and save it. And we'll go ahead and just rerun this. And now that check passes. For HLSL, it's the same type thing. We configure it. We can create our de defaults. Um, for now, I'm just gonna leave it with the defaults. We will save that and we are green across the board. So let's start digging into what some of these integrations can do. First, let's look at the integration tool. If I navigate over to a file, let's say lyracharacter.h, um, you get this window by pressing Control T, by the way, in Visual Studio. And you can also see here on the right, this is the scroll bar config that I set up earlier um, to have the little map of files as opposed to just being a boring scroll bar. So with the Visual Studio integration tool, we are going to see some data populate here in a moment. And it, it might take a little bit the first time because it's got to come through and process all the blueprints. But once that's done, we are going to see a helpful little indicator that shows us all of the different references that we have to Lyra character. I'm gonna let this finish and then we'll take a look. That's done now and you can see we have four derived blueprint classes. We can drill into those and we can see that shooting target, character default, hero pawn, and hero default are all using Lyra character as a base class. We can also look at what U functions are being called by our project by doing right click and find all blueprint references. This is just like find all references in C++, except it works for blueprints. And it's gonna chug a little bit while it does the search, especially the first time. But momentarily, we should see a pane pop up with all of our blueprint references. That's now done, and we can see that B-Test Auto Run and B-Test Fire Weapon both reference Git Lyra Player Controller. So if we wanted to change this function and make sure that things are still working correctly, we go to those blueprints in the editor and see what's going on. Next thing I wanted to show is the test adapter that we set up. If your Unreal project has tests, we can come here and click the run all button and it will discover all tests in the project. And again, this does take a moment, but once it gets uh, caught up, we should see everything. All right, discovery is now done and it's starting our test run. We can see that Lyra has 599 tests. This might take a little while to run. Well, actually it's pretty quick. And we can see that we had 598 pass and one failed. I don't know why there is a failing test in the newly provisioned Lyra project, but we could look into that. The thing that's cool here though, is all of the tests that we could run in the Unreal Engine test uh, UI, we can also just run here straight from Visual Studio. Cool. Another thing I wanna show is the new snippets. So the documentation has a bunch of details, but now if you type U class and then press tab, it will automatically generate you kind of the fundamentals that you would need when making a new U class. Similarly, if you wanna add a new U function, you can do the same and it will generate the macro header and a basic function declaration. Um, I suspect there's one for use structs as well. Yeah, there are. 
And let's also see if we can get the naming check to work here. Um, we set up our editor config and my expectation is it's gonna tell us, hey, we expect this to follow a naming convention and it does not. So if we say show potential fixes, assuming I can successfully click on the little light bulb, it will say apply naming convention and then prompt me to make it F my struct, which is the standard convention. And then it'll do all the standard refactoring stuff, which is easy in this case because it only exists here. Awesome. Um, one last feature that I wanted to show, which is pretty cool, is Visual Studio now has macro expansion and it goes step by step, which makes it easier to see what is going on. So if you ever wanted to drill in and say, hey, like what is actually going on in this UE log macro? You can right click on it and say, where is it, where is it, where is it? Ah, here it is. So in the um, tool tip that pops up, we can click visualize expansion, which is gonna bring up this window down here. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And you can go through step-by-step step on the expansion and see what the actual code is that ultimately is gonna get spat out by the preprocessor. So we can see that text gets replaced with text paste, which then gets replaced with wide text, which then gets replaced with wide text paste, which then gets replaced with the, uh, the L prefix for the wide string on Windows, which then gets uh, turned into a call to UE private log. Then it expands some more and we have a bunch of const expert code running. And we can go all the way and we can see this is the actual C++ that's running when we expand that UE log macro all the way. Anyhow, I think this is like a super cool feature for when you're trying to debug some weird macro stuff. And so I am very happy to have that available now. That is everything I wanted to show. I'm very excited to use this Visual Studio update. And I also hope that this brief guide on how to set up Unreal Engine for use with Visual Studio is useful to you and to future Marcus when he forgets in a couple years. Till next time, be kind to one another. Peace.